Hey y'all. Well, I had said that I would uh, video every day, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week. But yesterday, I was so worn out I didn't do anything. <laughs> so today, I'm back at it, getting prepared for our garden tour. And I thought it would be nice to offer a few little treats, eats, while they're here. So the first thing I'm making is something my mom makes a lot of. They're very easy. Graham cracker crunch cookies, I guess is what you would call them. What I have in this pan is one stick of butter, one stick of margarine, which I don't like using margarine, but with this dish, it just doesn't work right if you use all straight butter. So one stick of butter, one stick of margarine, and half a cup of white sugar. And I have it on a low flame, and you need to stir it pretty constantly until it gets thick and kind of, uh, well, it starts to turn color. A little bit, tiny bit more brown than, than yellow, but not burnt brown. This, the trickiest part of this whole recipe is cooking this long enough to where it thickens a little bit. In this foil lined pan, I have separated a lot of graham cracker pieces and tried to do them where they didn't break, which is next to impossible to have them break correctly. So when this is ready, I will pour this mixture all over the top of these graham crackers. And <laughs> Cooper, Cooper and Lucy are playing. And um, then sprinkle it with chopped pecans. And you bake it at 350 for about 10 minutes. You want the foil on there because, well, I'll show you at the end. It's about the only way you can get them all separated without it sticking to your pan. So, once this thickens up, I'll come back and show you the rest. This butter and sugar mixture has thickened up quite a bit and it's turned from a bright yellow to a little bit more golden. So now, going to pour it down the middle of each uh, graham cracker strip here. And then just kind of spread it out with my spoon. to get it all covered everywhere and sprinkle with the chopped pecans. Now you're going to bake it like I said at 350 for about 10 minutes. Depending on your oven you may have to bake it just a tiny bit longer. You want them to look a golden brown. have to excuse the oven noise. My oven fan makes a bit of noise. I probably have a little over cup, cup and a half of pecans here. I like a lot of pecans on these. And it took, uh, well because I broke so many graham crackers it took two sleeves but I had a bunch of extra. It usually takes about one and a half sleeves of graham crackers. Okay, I'm gonna pop it in the oven for 10 minutes. 
I actually bake these about 12 minutes and I've let them cool a little bit. And now what you do is just peel back the foil and you can break them apart. Ta-da! Next up, mini cheesecake. For the mini cheesecake recipe, I have two of the, I think they're called tassel pans, the little mini cheesecake pans. You want to place liners in them. And then you want to crush up the, some vanilla wafers. I have a lot extra here. I could probably do a whole nother set because I think I've got enough filling that I can do that as well. But you crush up some vanilla wafers and you put about a half of a teaspoon in the bottom of each cup. Now I'll show you the filling. So in my grandma's bowl here, I have uh, two eight ounce packages of cream cheese. I have three fourths of a cup of sugar, two eggs, one tablespoon of lemon juice, and one teaspoon of vanilla. And I had fun. Isn't this beautiful? I told my son at Christmas that I needed a, a juicer. He wanted to know what to get me. I said a juicer. Isn't that gorgeous? And it works tremendously well. So now we're just going to blend until smooth. And now you just want to fill each of the cups almost to the top, but not quite. And yes, there's enough cheesecake filling to make another batch of doubles there. Now I'm going to put it in a 350 degree oven for 15 minutes. Baklava. Well, you're going to want to start with your syrup mixture because it has to be completely cool. And in this pan, I have one cup of sugar, three fourths cup of water, a half a cup of honey and two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. So, freshly squeezed lemon juice. Oh, it started. I forgot we had a lot of it. So, we want to bring it to a boil to dissolve the sugar. The sauce is now at a rolling boil and the sugar is all dissolved. So now you turn it down to low. Do not stir it. Put your timer on four minutes and then turn it off. This is the part that takes a long time. I have two um, phyllo doughs to come to a package and I thawed them in the refrigerator overnight. And then an hour before I was gonna start, I set them out so they could become uh, room temperature. In this bowl, I have four cups of walnuts that I pulsed in my um, food processor for about 10 pulses. If you don't have a food processor, you just chop them pretty finely. And one teaspoon of cinnamon. Just mix that up. In this other pan back here, I have two and a half sticks of melted butter. My dish is glass. You could use uh, metal, nonstick. But my glass one, the last time I made this at Christmas, it works great. So, still has glass. Hey, okay. Cooper, what are you doing? I'll set this one aside right now. You've never worked with phyllo dough. Not just real easy to get undone sometimes. Now, measuring it, it was too long for my pan the last time. So, the first thing I need to do is trim some off.
when you're working with the speedo dough, it's also important that you keep a damp um, towel, kitchen towel, over the top of it all the time so it doesn't completely dry out. First thing, you want to butter your pan. Make sure you get the sides. And now we're going to start layering. I'm telling you, this is the tedious part. Oh, that one already kind of came out. Sometimes they stick together. Ugh, like that. You want to keep it covered, like I said, all the time. And you have to butter each layer. I'm going to do 10 layers before we do the next step. Oh, okay, I think that's 10. The first 10. So after we have the first 10, this is a 3 fourths cup measure. We're going to sprinkle the walnut cinnamons evenly over the top. Now we do it again, but instead of 10, we do five and then walnuts, five and then walnuts. And then I'll have to open the other pack to do two more fives and walnuts and then the last 10, buttering between every piece. Okay, well that second round went easier than the first round. Now uh, you want to cut your baklava into four pieces, long strips. Now we're going to do diagonals. And you're going to bake it at a 325 degree oven for an hour and 15 minutes or until golden brown on top. Well, it ended up being an hour and about seven minutes instead of eight because it was nicely browned. And as soon as it comes out, you want to take this cool syrup, maybe hear it sizzling, I don't know, you might not be able to hear it on the oven. want to spread it all in the creases. This is going to soften it, of course add a lot of flavor. This has to sit for a minimum of four to six hours, but it's better if you can leave it overnight. And it is amazing stuff. Maybe tomorrow when the garden people are here, some of them can tell you what they think of it. You want to leave this out. It's stored at room temperature. And I will just put a, um, a cloth. What am, I, what am I trying to say? kitchen towel over the top of it and we'll be back in a moment. My last task this morning before I clean up is to make a flower arrangement. I um, bought a few cut flowers 
yesterday, but I also just left the yard and cut a whole lot of different things. So this is a bread bowl, obviously not waterproof. So what you do is get you some plastic. This is just a simple black contractor trash bag. And in the middle I have some floral foam that I soaked in water. Probably could have used two of them, but I only had one. So I will make do. Plus since this is a wide, shallow um, container, most of them will probably kind of lay flat. And you know, if you have a, a container that uh, is tall or clear, you wouldn't be able to use floral foam if it's glass. But one thing you can do if you have a clear container is uh, use something like chicken wire over the top, and that would act like a frog to hold it. Okay, now I will fill it with some water. Another reason I bought cut flowers is so that I could get this preservative because I didn't have any. So, I'm going to put that in first. And I cut some fresh herbs, add some wonderful smell, also to help hide the plastic. Some basil, I just put some sage in. And here's some thyme. Just kind of just tucking it down in to the water. It's more for smell and covering the plastic than anything. And then I've got some dill. Dill is so pretty in arrangements. Carefully scoot it back in place. So, what y'all think? <laughs>